I'll be reading from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21, the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, who appointed me as a judge or an arbiter between you? And then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store all of my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus of grains. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores things up for themselves, but is not rich towards God. In this passage, Jesus talks about a man whose sole interest was in his worldly possessions. This man believed that the amount of possessions he had is what would define his happiness. Once he had enough for years to come, he thought it would be he would be happy, but in fact, God chose that day to be his last. This man believed that his worth was based on the worth of his possessions, which is a huge mistake. The concept of worldly belongings is one that is mentioned as early as Genesis, and that our belongings will just return to dust and only our relationship with God will stand. Being in a uni culture, talking about future jobs is very common, and it's common in recent times for people to focus on the career that they want to have, the money that they want to make, and we find that many people believe that their happiness is found through these possessions, but it isn't. To God, you are who you are as a person is way more important than what you do for a living or what you own. Lent reminds us that the world is passing and the years are going by. And instead of finding comfort in money and worldly things, we should trust in the one thing that is eternal, in God. The most important thing and the only thing that is a permanent reality. We should first seek to know God and find comfort in him, because without him we are nothing. Our phones and computers and designer clothes could never comfort us in the way that God can. And until we realise this, we will never truly be happy. By putting the Lord before all else, we receive infinitely more than we might fear that we lose. We receive hope, comfort and unconditional love. Lent is a great way of overcoming this. We give up the things that have control over us and instead we free that time to focus on God. But this shouldn't be a practice that we do just for a few months a year. Instead, we should really humble ourselves and ask God to search us, to find our idols that are preventing us from a full relationship with our Creator. Over the next week or so, we should be praying for God to search us, for him to remove these idols from our life and help us dedicate our most important possession to him, our time.